All right, man, it is eight o'clock, uh, according to my computer. Uh, we're <laughs> glad that you're here. And uh, if uh, history is any indication, we'll have some more folks join us <clears throat> as the uh, time goes on. And there comes somebody now. Um, this is going to be our Christmas um, meeting. And uh, our theme is your favorite Christmas brigade story. So uh, Jay, uh, when he gets on, will be uh, uh, leading us in that discussion. Uh, and we look forward to hearing some of your stories tonight. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Somebody just muted me. All right. So. We'll begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this time uh, to be with uh, fellow men and women who have a passion for Christian Service Brigade. And uh, we are certainly grateful for the impact on our lives and the uh, privilege we have of partnering with you uh, for new young men to learn how to live bright and keen for you. And Lord, we just give up you this time. We ask that you receive the honor and glory and just guide and direct our thoughts and our conversation. And uh, we'll just say thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Joel, you are now muted. There we go. So uh, we're uh, <clears throat> going to now move to our our trivia, and our trivia tonight uh, is going to be focused around the Unit Advocate Initiative. I think all of you here have at least heard about the Unit Advocates. Several of you on here tonight are Unit Advocates, and <clears throat> uh, we're just going to do a little trivia around that. And just like always, you'll be guessing on some of them, but others you might uh, know the answer. Which two unit advocates have volunteered for four units each? That means these two men are covering four different units. Roger Campbell and Ed Babcock, John Hoffman and Dean Carpenter, Tom Middleton and Gene Prohaski, or Dave Cameron and Dan Hopler. Oh. Well, by the way, all of these are are unit advocates, but they're not they're not they're not all serving four units. <laughs> Ten more seconds. And the answer is Dave Cameron and Dan Hopler. They they each are serving uh, four four units. Uh, Dave is serving three uh, on Long Island, where he resides, and one down uh, in Virginia, uh, where where his daughter his daughter uh, lives, and it will soon be getting married. And uh, it, look, the 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 uh, units uh, not far from too far from from there and Dan Hopler is serving four units in eastern New York where he lives and they're all close enough that he can actually go to visit them and he's been at least to one of them to visit already and done has done the council ring <clears throat> which unit advocate was a former CSB interim president and currently serves on the CSB board Steve Earhart BJ Slinger Dick Kreider or Dave Ephraim? Yeah, 
Okay, uh, 10 seconds. And the answer is uh, Steve Earhart. Steve Earhart did serve as an interim president in the 90s and and now is currently serving on our board and actually uh, obviously is a unit advocate. Uh, of, of course, B.J. Slinger, uh, uh, many of you know B.J. He was on brigade staff for, I don't know, two or three decades, uh, served well out in the Wheaton area, uh, was uh, originally brought on to work with uh, curriculum or the, you know, uh, in, in the in, in in that department, but obviously uh, uh, served in other important ways as well. And BJ is actually one of our unit advocates, so that's really great to have him uh, now back. He just retired it, uh, in September uh, from uh, his other position that he had after he left uh, brigade. So so he is actually now serving as unit advocate as well. <clears throat> Which unit advocate? who is not on CSB staff, was featured in the Brigade Alumni We Need You video clip. If uh, any of you uh, watch that, I know that Christian will get this right because Christian took the, uh, she was a photographer, uh, a videographer for this. Uh, so Dennis Painter, Jules Paoli, uh, Steve Miller, or uh, Dave LaHoka. And these are all unit advocates, but only one of them is featured on the Brigade Alumni We Need You video clip and is also a unit advocate. <clears throat> Got a couple more that need to guess yet. Well, everybody came in with at least one vote, but the answer is Christian. Jules Paoli. Jules Paoli, yep. And Jules Paoli is a unit advocate uh, down uh, here. Uh, he doesn't live far from Arden Musselman or me, but uh, especially I'm very close to the Delaware border and he just lives in North Delaware and he's serving uh, uh, down there. So. Uh, which unit advocate was a former CSB president? Joe Bubar, Don Patterson, Joe Namath, and Dean Carpenter. Two more people to vote. <clears throat> well, the answer is uh, Don Patterson. And actually, Don is on tonight. Can you highlight uh, Don for a second, please, Keith? Great to have you, Don. And, and Don's recently come on as a unit advocate and has suggested you might want to work along with this another way. So it's great. Uh, we did serve briefly together when I came on staff. So it's great to uh, see you again, Don. Yes. Hello, Don. <laughs> Good to be on with you all. Good. <laughs> okay. And the fifth question, uh, which unit advocate is presently working on a battalion mission on the topic of fly fishing? So one of the unit advocates is also helping by writing a battalion mission. B.J. Slinger, Bruce Biderman, Dave LaHoka, or Gene Prohaski? Looks like a lot of people guessing on this one. <laughs> And the answer is Bruce Biderman. Um, Bruce is someone uh, who who uh, actually uh, reconnected with Brigade through the um, re uh, reconnect on our our website. Uh, he he's fairly recently retired within the last year. He grew up in Brigade, but was not involved as an adult leader. Uh, but now. Uh, when the first conversation I had with him, I said, do you have any hobbies? He says, I love to fly fish. I said, 
how about writing a battalion mission and fly fishing? So he and I have been doing that together, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, he's also the most uh, recent member of our um, alumni team that we'll be introducing uh, shortly. So I'm going to um, um, move it back over to you for some alumni giveaways, Christian. Yes. Hello, gentlemen. My name is Christian. If you don't know who I am, I work in the national office and um, we have some fun giveaways. So uh, the first one is this beautiful hat. Not this one. I'll give you your own that I'm going to have it on. <laughs> But it has this little palm. We'll get you guys into, you know, that trendy new hat thing. And it has the brigade logo on it. That might look backwards to you guys. If your birthday is the closest to Christmas, who has a December birthday? Oh, Arden. Arden, you have a December. Does anybody else have, have a December? Or I guess if it's January and it's very close. Anybody has close January? Don? When is yours? The 16th? No. Oh. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm... Is it just my... <laughs> okay, one more time. Unmute. Unmute, Don. <clears throat> Arden, when's yours? Uh, the 3rd. December 3rd. December 3rd. Oh, January 18th. Look at Del Kincaid. January 18th. Oh, ooh, Dale. Ooh, ooh, Dale. Oh, Dale. <laughs> Dale, when's your birthday? December 22nd. Okay, you win. You win. I win. <laughs> I was brought home on Christmas Day. If that <laughs> he, he, need, he needs a hat to keep his head warm. Yes, yeah, well, I, I could just like, see Dale wearing that, oh, that one with the palm on it. Oh, I get a, I get a beanie get hat. hat. Yes, John. Yeah, have does, staff, does staff, um, are, is staff eligible? There's a good question. <laughs> well, I've gone back and forth, but let's not take time on deciding <laughs> this time. You know, I feel like when people have a birthday so close to Christmas, they kind of, you know, have to share Christmas presents. So, Dale, this is for you. Okay, the next one is <laughs> questions. And this is if you watch our social media, which I hope you do. And let me just put a little plug. If you are watching our social media, like like my little posts okay i would love it love it love it if you like my posts um okay why are we celebrating with hot chocolate and cookies for the whole month of december actually there's kind of two reasons oh dan dan had his hand up first wait i think you're muted Right there, huh? 85 yeah. years. 85 years. Yes, it's our birthday. It is our birthday. And um, the other reason, it's part of our beginning story. Did and does anybody know? John? Are you I'm raising John. your hand? John Hoffman? Yeah, that was the first meeting <gasps> of Christian Service Brigade. Yes, where we had cookies and, and hot, hot chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so you guys both win a prize. This beautiful hot chocolate memory ornament. Ah, good. You have a yeah. choice. You can have this ornament, which I think is really cool, or Joel has an ornament. Where's Joel? Where did Joel go? <clears throat> which you might have already gotten, but it's good to have two. Christian Service Brigade ornament. It's like leather. So you guys can let me know later which one you want, and I'll send it out to you. Um, and that is it for our giveaways today. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Christian. Believe it or not, it's been one year now that we started having our council rings. And this is our, this is our uh, a year to, uh, to celebrate uh, that, that we've done it now for 12 months. And I want to introduce the alumni team. Four of them are on tonight. Two of them, unfortunately, 
uh, were not able uh, to be here tonight. Ed Babcock just took a new pastorate, and he's literally moving this weekend. So for some lame reason, he couldn't be on tonight. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he said, I'm just going to, you know, we're, they're just trying to find, they're, they're selling their house, they're moving to a different state, and they're going crazy. So so he'll be back with us in January. And Bruce Biderman, he and his wife uh, have purchased tickets, uh, uh, you know, to an event tonight and, and, and are unable to be here. But but these six men, Roger Campbell, Tom Middleton, Dave Cameron, Dan Hopler, and like I mentioned, Ed Babcock and Bruce Biderman, these men have become great friends of mine over the last year. Uh, they, they actually, at a time when we really needed some help, they stood up and said, we're willing to help Brigade. They've already been helping Brigade in some ways in the past, but they said, Brigade's at a critical time right now. We want to help Brigade not only survive, we want Brigade to thrive. And these, these men have, have, I really respect them. I uh, really, they've come with a lot of enthusiasm and passion for Brigade. And, and I've really come to love each of these men as, as dear friends. And just like uh, how you got close to the counselors when you were serving on a, you know, a camp over the summer, right? You got really close to the other counselors. We, we've worked on several different initiatives together. Um, the, fir the first initiative, which we had just started uh, prior to the team, but every year, and actually, um, Roger has his hat right there, the, the Brigade alumni hat. Um, we, uh, when, like, for instance, uh, Roger's a, a, a battalion captain. Uh, yeah, there, there's a couple. Okay, so when the battalion captains send us the contact information for all the graduating seniors, we send hats to the, to the different um to directly to the to the captain and then the captain has an opportunity to sit down with each of the graduating seniors and give them the hat you know give them a challenge and pray with them so it's a great opportunity plus we benefit because we have their email address and and so so that was an initiative we started uh prior to that but an initiative that came out of this uh, this team was council rings and Roger Campbell would just briefly explain how, why, why we felt that was a need to do something like this. Well, of course, we've been trying to reconnect with alumni across the board and uh, we got what 17 here on here tonight and um, certainly want to expand the list of alumni folks and this um, council ring provides us an opportunity to connect. Uh, and to share stories and to see each other and develop friendships and to learn from one another and to encourage uh, Christian Service Brigade growth. And uh, our hope is that some of the alumni out there will either become advocates, which some already have, and also uh, others that might even consider assisting, helping to stand up new units out there. So uh, we we believe that the council rings is highly important for us to um but a matter of fact, prior to all the stuff that happened a year or so ago, um, many of us didn't know each other. And so this gave us a big opportunity to meet people across the country and in different regions uh, and learn from each other. And it also provides a great deal of encouragement and support. So um, I enjoy being on these meetings. Um, and by the way, I got four of the five questions tonight. Only missed one. <laughs> I guess that should have been right for me. But anyway, so this, this is a great this is a great time to get together, um, and we just uh, look forward to this being a big part of helping us grow the organization. And as we're getting graduating seniors to become alumni, keeping them connected because that's something we didn't do a very good job of over the years, and now we're trying to correct that. And so this helps us do that. Great. Thanks, Roger. Uh, the unit advocate initiative uh, was birthed as well uh, through this team. Of course, uh, I shared it with, uh, you know, CSB President Scott Hyma, and he got behind it. The board got behind it. Uh, we're all really excited about it. Uh, and, and 
Dan's going to tell us a little bit about the unit advocate uh, initiative and why that's so important to us. Yes, the uh, unit advocate is really a, a program for a praise the Lord. Uh, I'm really excited about the opportunity, and it's the ways to give alumni a chance to participate. And it's men leading men. So we have uh, 23 advocates. That's really wonderful. It's a great start. And we uh, advocates that, that are taking one or two or three or four, and we have 35 different battalions or stockades who have an advocate and that are helping out, encouraging and calling them. Um, it's just a, uh, it's a local, uh, it's a real blessing to the, the local battalions. And um, it's, it, there's different ways to advocate, you know, uh, encouragement and uh, talking and uh, attending, uh, attending the meetings, uh, giving a council ring. And we're learning out new ways that advocates can help uh, different battalion programs. But it's all for the leading boys for Christ. And that's what it's all about, Brighton King for Christ. And we, uh, this program is growing. And if anybody wants to learn more about becoming an advocate, um, that'll be uh, uh, very easily to do. And then we can have more. And we hope to have more as, as, uh, as we go on. But have 23 just in the first year, I think, is a great start. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, yes, yeah, so if anybody has an interest, uh, uh, just shoot me an email. I'm obviously on the CSB website if you don't know my email address, and I'll get you. I'll, I'll send you the information to for you to consider that. Uh, also, uh, some one thing. It's not that we never did them before, but we're really starting to get intentional and we'll start seeing these happen more frequently. And I think Christian's even going to talk about how you personally can consider being part of an alumni gathering uh, in your region. Yes, actually, Coy, did you wanna say anything? We have an alumni gathering while he's unmuting coming up in North, uh, in South Carolina. Um, Coit's region, uh, his unit is hosting, um, I'm sorry, the view is, is being weird, hold on, okay. Um, Coit's region is, uh, unit is hosting us, and we're very excited about it, January 28th. Um, did you unmute, Coit? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Well, we, we did this before one, one other time back in 2016, so um, the whole idea, in, in fact, I don't know if some of y'all, you can see that. That's glary. There it goes. But it's, we're calling Envision Carolina. And we're targeting alumni in the North and South Carolina. And it happens to be because we're the only battalion in there. So the big chunk of alumni are from our battalion anyway. But uh, Christian, I don't know how many you've been in touch with that are not 2733, but you re recall? Yeah, you mean that are coming for sure? Like, three. well, that that you're at least responding. How many uh, alumni that are not two seven three three live in the Carolinas? Yeah, we have about sixty in our system. Okay. Uh, they may not all be alumni, but probably they are. Yeah. Okay. There. And, and I've I've been in touch with it's a uh, hundred to hundred and fifty so far of our alumni. And if it's any indication like the last time, uh, they'll wait until the, toward the end, but we had 75 show up last time and I anticipate, I have no reason to believe that we won't have uh, 75, maybe even more. Um, and one of the things that I would like to see happen, and I don't really want to plan it outright up front. I wanted to see as we rub shoulders with some of the my old non-coms and all to see if I can get a couple of people that will uh, take the banner up on this, but I'd like to see us have uh, a little bit of an active alumni association in the Carolinas. And I don't know what that's gonna look like. I don't know what that's gonna entail, but that's something in the back of my mind. Uh, this program, basically it's a, it's a lunch on a Saturday. Uh, there will be testimonies from uh, several alumni. We'll have some Herald of Christ there. Uh, Scott will be speaking. Uh, Christian will be speaking. And um, uh, we'll have multimedia. And it's just a good chance to rub shoulders with people and, and 
talk war stories and the whole bit again. Um, 2733, we have alumni going back to, and let's see when it started, back in to 88 was when I first started it. So we've got a, a pretty deep uh, bed of alumni in, that are still living in the area. And we are also going to have a campfire the night before Friday and roast some hot dogs. And, and that's going to be more of an informal time. And we don't anticipate a whole lot. I think last year we had a, a dozen or so. So that's the plan. We'll see. Uh, we have a couple of goals. One is to try to uh, spark some interest in the alumni to let them know that things are getting back. You know, they've heard a lot of bad stories about what's been going on in Brigade. And, and I like to reverse that around and encourage them to say, hey, uh, there's a lot of good things going on. Uh, Steve Earhart will be there, and a lot of our guys know Steve because they're uh, Steve's sons uh, are 2733 alumni, so he'll be able to encourage him there. So that's one thing, alumni. Number two is hoping that we'll get a couple of churches in the area that would like to learn more about Christian Service Brigade, perhaps to even start a unit. And, uh, and then another is I want to encourage especially my alumni to see if uh, they would commit to, you know, $10 a month, or I'm going to give them the challenge. I tell them I, I, I give $27.33, 2733 a month. And, and I'd like to see if I can, you know, get a, some of our alumni to do the same. And so it's, it's just get some excitement going on to, to try to get some traction. And once the event is over, uh, see if we can get that momentum going into other profitable directions. So, thanks, Coy. Okay, uh, thanks, Christian. And and so, what what we'll want to do is is if you uh, have an interest in in uh, perhaps being on a committee uh to help host that doesn't mean you have to be the host but if you're like i would love to see something like that happen you know within a two-hour drive of where i live uh, uh reach out to christian and and uh, we'll get the ball rolling <clears throat> we have about 10 minutes now and and uh our team member dave uh cameron's going to lead this uh we'll probably have time for about three or four favorite Christmas Christmas brigade stories not just your you know when you got hot wheels as a kid or something but our favorite Christmas brigade story because we do want to have a little discussion uh towards the end so Dave we'll give you about 10 minutes to host uh several men telling their favorite Christmas brigade story okay good evening everybody um I'll I'll start this off because um uh, as soon as I, I saw the brigade story, um, I, I thought of something right away, and it has never left my mind each year. It keeps on coming up in my mind. But back in, uh, it was about 1998, um, my uh, son and I we had just uh, left a uh, Christian service brigade meeting at church. And um, as we were driving, I, I kind of heard him sniffling a little bit. And I said, well, what's the the matter and um he said um dad i think i'm gonna have to give up patch and uh now patch is a a little stuffed uh dog white dog that matt matt was 10 years old at the time so he probably had that like five or six years and he took patch with him wherever he went so i knew how much meaning this this uh, little stuffed animal had in his heart so with that, he says, uh, I'm going to have to give Patch up. And I said, why is that? And they said, well, at our meeting tonight, we uh, spoke about um, giving. And not just giving, but giving from your heart, giving something that has meaning to you. And it's a hard thing to do. Well, Right before I pulled up into the driveway, uh, I was having a hard time wiping the tears off my eyes because I'm thinking, oh gosh, this, this little guy is ready to give up his favorite uh, stuffed animal that means so much to him. So I said, man, let's, let's do something first. Let's go up into your room. And I said, uh, let's just sit and ask the Lord about this and pray. 
because I know how much meaning this little thing has to you. And I, I, know, I know what's in your heart. And the reason why is because when we came back from Brigade, we had been uh, helping out uh, this, uh, this mission. It's called Helping Hand Missions. It's in the Huntington Station. And at that time, I guess there was around 100 uh, people going there from, from time to time. So we were delivering food. And this was a time where we also wanted to bring them toys and also wrap the toys up. So I said, okay, Matt, let's, let's ask the Lord what we should do about this. And as we were praying, I, I was just waiting for an opening. And, and all of a sudden it says, you know what? There's a lot of patches out there. And I said, I'm sure that, you know, we could find something that looked just like patch if you want to do that. And I said, maybe, just maybe you want to take the money from your, your, uh, your piggy bank over there and buy that. So um, that's what we did. We, we went out the following day. We went down to uh, this, this store and there was an identical patch right there. And I said, Matt, that's it, go grab it. And he, he, he paid with it, with his money. And, and uh, that, that weekend we went to um, the Helping Hand Missions and uh, he wrapped this uh, uh, patch up in, uh, in a Christmas paper and to, to give to, uh, to one of the boys that was uh, there. So that has always hung up in my mind. And I, I, from time to time, I asked Matt, I said, do you remember this? He says, I'll, I'll never forget it. it. It was just such a meaningful time that, that, that 10 minutes from us leaving the, the church and by the time we got home of, of him telling me how uh, Im impacted he was with that little, that little uh, uh, um, stuffed animal that had meant so much to him that his willingness to give that up. I've shared this numerous times with other other leaders, but that's the impact that we can have on these these lessons that we teach in our brigade on Tuesday nights for kids to to understand that you know what we're looking back. This is almost twenty five years ago, so it's very very still in our minds. So. Time has a way of passing as we get older and older, but there's so many things that, that have meaning to them that we'll never forget. So I'll leave that to uh, someone else. Very good. Used to be tradition uh, at our battalion to go Christmas caroling. Uh, the last meeting before Christmas and um, and then have a party when we got back from Christmas caroling. So it was always interesting. We had a large battalion, so loading up in vans and cars and uh, cruising the neighborhoods. And usually we, we did shut-ins uh, from the church and would knock on the door with a big crowd and uh, probably with some pretty ugly singing. Uh, in fact, I know it was, but uh, it was joyous <laughs> and uh, and fun. But um, the the biggest memory is my birthday is always the last meeting before Christmas as well. And uh, Christian, you have to turn your uh, speaker off. This goes back in time uh, when it was uh, still legal. Uh, the tradition was uh, you always got a wedgie on your birthday. Uh, <clears throat> <dying>. <laughs> So you just got flocked in a wedgie. So as I got older, I decided I was going to fix that problem. So I went to uh, battalion commando and, uh, and <laughs> when they jumped me and reached down in, I hear, <laughs> and then I never had to worry about that again. Fix the problem. <laughs> Nobody ever tried it again. Oh, Dale, that's such a great Christmas story. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> that was well, instead of Jingle there, Dale. Bells, we had Dingle Berries, but anyway. <laughs> Any more wedgie stories I can pop off? <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe they should have switched up to swirly. (laughs) 
Uh, I fixed that problem too. <laughs> you can still swirl a bald head. <laughs> hmm. You know, he talked about going out and uh, Christmas uh, carrying. That that was another thing that uh, our family would do. Uh, my wife, my uh, my daughters, and uh, my son Matt, and I would uh, go out and um, we would make like a a, a a trail of houses that we were going to stop off, and the people never knew that we were going to be there. But I, I I played trumpet, so I always and we always did like joy to the world. So it was pretty pretty bold when we started to play and all of a sudden you start to see neighbors uh coming out and there was this one house that we went to for this this elderly lady and it turns out that uh she we were at the wrong house and <laughs> this this lady had come out and she's like she started clapping and everything like that <laughs> but then we realized we don't know who she was you know she was just an, another neighbor but after that we started like the following year we went to that person again and it was just amazing how we would start to pick up playing for different different homes after this but we did that for so so many years it was really a really a good time well alex might want to speak to this but our our battalion i'm the chairman and alex is one of the co-captains with my with, he's co-captains with my twin brother but they do a service project uh uh for, for uh, maybe you want to share just a little bit about that alex sure you beat me to it um so our, our battalion has a tradition for uh helping set up uh stillwater's um live uh live nativity scene so um, all the stuff that's required, and it's a pretty uh, a pretty involved production. Um, it's amazing to see a group of young men uh, get everything out, get everything uh, out to the uh, proper locations, and set stuff up. Uh, and we get a lot done in a really short time. So, yeah, and the battalion's really uh, taken off this year. We've got, you've got a several what about six new young men i think is something like that it's been great really grown yeah a new one last night even right so yeah it's great well through the helping hand uh, missions every year they go down to this uh, one school and i would believe there's probably now there's probably three or four hundred uh, children that come so the week before that we do a lot of a lot of wrapping and then in that that saturday morning all these vans pull up with all of these hundreds and hundreds of gifts and uh, our battalion would go in there take all the gifts and bring them all the way down to the, uh, the auditorium area where the where the school was there was one time however they what they were missing as santa claus wasn't able to make it and they asked me if I would put on the uh, the Santa Claus outfit. Well, it was really something because I'm I'm I was sitting there. I put this thing on. It says, "Now just wait here, and we'll come and get you." Well, inside that out that Santa Claus outfit, it, it must have been 120 degrees. <laughs> and I'm sitting on this in this chair, and I I, I felt like I was in uh, some kind of lockdown or something. But the only thing in front of me was a mirror, and I'm looking at myself in the mirror with beads of sweat rolling down my forehead, and I started bust out laughing. <laughs> and then they they said, "Okay, Mr. Cameron, it's time for you to come out." <laughs> so I'm walking through and these kids are like pulling on me like I was ready to rip me apart and uh you know because they they were so excited to, to see somebody so it just uh it was a, an awesome time for me to just go through that laugh at myself with this Santa Claus outfit on and then get mauled by all these kids that were coming in to sit down and wanting toys it was it was quite an experience in our um in our brigade unit, we have a couple different traditions. Uh, our battalion, um, we decided many years ago, we would go to like a new release um, movie. Our battalion meets on Monday nights. And many times movies, new brand new movies are released on either Thursday or Friday. 
And a lot of times, uh, well, pre-pandemic, big movie releases such as Star Wars and others. And many times I would say, you know, okay, if you've got a, a brother in stockade, you can bring him. And I wanted to get a picture. We had between 35 and 40 uh, battalion guys and their dads this at this one Star Wars. And I wanted to get a picture of everybody, but so many people were going into the theater early. So I went into the theater and was walking around to everybody and said, you know, hey, don't leave after the movie. Make sure we meet in the lobby so we can get a group picture. And I went over to this one group and there was a, a, a group that had a stockade, a stockader there with them. And I'm, I said, you know, don't leave. And they're like, his name's Justin. It's like, guess what, Mr. Haima? Han Solo dies. <laughs> like, no, he, he blew it right before the movie even started, you know, and because he had already seen it. We, we, we go on Mondays and the, the Star Wars movie had released. Um, but the, the more spiritual application tradition we have is our stockade Christmas Eve every year is a candlelight service. And our stockaders absolutely love to serve and put all the candles in the plastic candle holders. And uh, usually there's typically three services on Christmas Eve at my church. I attend a large. So they have to they have to get a production assembly going with these candles because we, we're, we're producing hundreds of these. So that those are a couple of traditions uh, around Christmas that we have in our brigade unit. Uh, thanks, everyone. We yeah, wanted to spend a little bit of time um, just around a discussion. Uh, first of all, if does anyone, uh, there's two aspects of it. There can be some, does anybody have questions? I need the alumni have questions about the, you know, our alumni team and, 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 or, or thoughts for alumni team. And more than that, Obviously, our big role uh, is to raise the awareness of CSB. We talked about several ways that we're doing that, but perhaps you have an idea of some way that we can raise awareness for Brigade that we haven't thought about. And actually, uh, you know, what Coit said about having a, a, a regional alumni association, we've actually talked about that. You know, we haven't been able to implement that yet, but that's a great idea, Coit. So I just thought, hey, we have a little bit of time. Um, uh, and I just, we actually share a lot about what we're doing to raise the awareness but do you have some ideas about how we can raise awareness of CSB or just some questions uh, for us to consider as a team? What comes to my mind is, um, and I just thought of this, is uh, looking for opportunities to take our boys somewhere and do a, a service project. Uh, I was thinking here in Akron, we have a, what's called Open M, which is a place that um, packs and provides food to the people in the area. So we could uh, consider doing something like that as an example, or volunteering at the uh, Mission Downtown Akron uh, and find you know doing some task there that would raise awareness of who we are and you know, all of that. So I think trying to get our faces out in the community would be, uh, we're looking for opportunities to do that, I think would be something very important. Thanks, Roger, that's a great idea. One of the things that uh, we used to do is um, uh, go to the uh, shut-ins. Uh, this was like at the end of uh, November and uh, start to um, uh, rake and bag uh, the leaves in, in uh, many places. We wound up, I think it was with about maybe uh, five or six uh, different uh, shut-ins. Took, took a long time because some of the places were, were like in really, really bad shape. But we also tried to encourage the Pioneer Girls to come with us. And we made it like a team effort. And at that time, we, we had around 30 to 40 uh, people coming with us to the point where you know what, let's do this. Let's break up a little bit so we're not 
all emerging on the same place. And we took on a couple of other uh, uh, homes. But that's something that was always remembered by, uh, I know every time, uh, you know, the fall came and the, the, this one lady, she, we just uh, celebrated her 97th birthday. And uh, it was really amazing because I think she had the, the, the worst area to take, take care of. But, but everybody chipped in and these kids, they were, on, they were aware of that, you know what? We're doing this from, from the goodness in, in your hearts to do this for somebody else that's not able to do that. And if you can think about that, well, let's see how many of these we can do. And then once we got done, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon, then we'd all go back to the church and we had, you know, had some pizzas and stuff like that. But the kids really had a, had a great time. And it was really a, a good emotional time for even the, even the, uh, the parents of the kids, because we got them involved too. If they saw their son doing that, they were willing to take the time to do it too. And that, that's, that inclusion of having everybody come to do that for a good cause, that, that encouraged a lot of people to come. Has anyone tried having a car wash? Yeah, these are all uh, great ideas for local units, and, and, and those are uh, ideas we can pass on. Um, and so this, this is really helpful, but are, are in addition to, not instead of, but in addition to, are there any ways that, you know, you, we can uh, help raise awareness? By the way, one thing we're going to do, um, We've had a lot of different people on these um, council rings, but there's not a lot of people on tonight, you know, any one month. And so we're working on a, a survey that we're going to be sending out in the next week or so. Uh, it should be ready. It, you, all the alumni, whether they've ever been on a council ring or not, will get it. And I don't know how many people will fill it out, but that will help inform us how we can uh, <clears throat> make the council rings better. And if there's things that we do, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't think that the council rings are as appealing to younger adult alumni, um, but, but uh, you know, what are some ideas we can do to attract them? Uh, and I do think uh, eventually we want to grow enough so that we do a lot more regional things, you know, uh, uh, video chats and, you know, just occasionally do, you know, whether we'd have so many that we'd only be able to do that once in a while, which would be great, but it, it takes time where we are. I mean, I think it's incredible, uh, like, like um, Dan Hoppler said, that we have 23 unit advocates in such a short time. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm just really, really impressed. I get a lot of stories about how the local leaders are benefiting from that, how the unit advocates are, are blessed by, you know, these relationships that they're having. Some of them are online and some of them are in person, uh, but that doesn't seem to matter. There's a, a lot of great, there's a lot of really great great things that are, are, are happening. Uh, one of the unit advocates help, helped us figure out the one guy couldn't figure out why he couldn't, uh, the one chairman, why he couldn't order patches and he didn't have a, they were registered, but he didn't have a store account, <laughs> you know? So just simple things like that. Uh, it's been, it's been really, it's been really uh, great. Uh, uh, but, but we want to, uh, and I think these, uh, these events, these alumni gatherings are, are really important and they can be, you know, anything from more formal to like a, uh, not formal, but like a banquet, a sit down banquet to like, like something very informal, uh, like it could be like a, a hike and then, and then they gather around and make mountain pies, you know, uh, with a speaker. Um, sometimes we, we would try to have brigade staff there, but I think a, call, uh, a, a great alumnus could also do a great job representing brigade and we could have all the, um, uh, the promotion materials necessary. You know, I, I just want to bring something out too. Uh, um, I meet. I meet with a um, uh, 
group of uh, Christian police officers uh, once a month. And uh, that, that book I was telling you about the other day about uh, uh, discipleship and stuff, <clears throat> it, I guess the Lord's been leading me to like be a little bit more forward with that because when I meet these guys, I kind of like want to share that with them that, you know what, I just don't want to come here uh, once a month. If there's some way I can, I can be there to maybe disciple somebody that if you would be interested in listening to an older man, you know, because I, getting the information from younger guys, we, we've all, go, all gone through the same kind of uh, stress-related things on, on, the, on the police department and everything. But sometimes that to sit with somebody that you, you can talk to about the Lord, but also develop a relationship where we're talking about, you know what, this leads into not just where we are with men, but with young boys. And if you have young boys uh, and, and you're in a church where they don't have a discipleship for young boys, this is something uh, that would be uh, of very importance to this church to do that. And I think that uh, I'm, I'm going to be more opened up. I have one coming up uh, this uh, Saturday morning, and I'm going to be sharing that about Christian Service Brigade being into this because I really, I mean, you know, the, the book that we got that, uh, you know, pass the tor torch, take it back. Uh, there's so many uh, chapters in there where, you know what, you, you might be in your 80s, you might be in your 70s, but God still has a use for us. And if it's to share Christ with, with somebody else, whoever he puts in our, on our paths, that's the blessing that we're going to receive from this. So um, that's, that's my intention for this Saturday. Um, I'm already geared up for it, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's a great way to uh, raise awareness, yes. Mm -hmm. With some like-minded men and that they're Christian officers. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think we'll we'll move on, uh, uh, and then we can come back with if we have a couple minutes at the end uh, with some uh, some additional Christmas stories or just uh, mm. okay, other good, good. Uh, interactions. Okay. Um, did you want to say something, Martin? Well, I, I, I what, when that happens, I do have something to share as a Christmas story. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Well, let's I do think it we'll have end. time. At, I think we just want to. Uh, there's a couple things we want to uh, make sure the men are aware of, and uh, I think Christian's going to put these in the chat. What another way that alumni can be involved? Of course, last year we talked about um, this past or earlier this year, not last year. This earlier this year we talked about how alumni could be involved in summer camp, and 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 some some of uh, you were and another way is to be involved with um events that are going on in your region even if it's not the region that you grew up in when you grew up in brigade uh if there is a active region where you now live there's there's lots of different ways that you can if as as you're aware uh, aware of different events that you certainly can be praying for those events. Uh, you certainly can uh, volunteer for the events. I know that uh, this upcoming, uh, it's going to come in the chat in a minute here too, about the um, the Delaware Valley Camperama. I serve on the support team because I know that the those that are coming as brigade leaders, it's really hard to, to try to be a brigade leader and then try to run a lot of the events. So, so uh, Arden and, and the committee does a great job of recruiting a lot of other men uh, that don't currently. A lot of them are, you know, have been leaders and you know, uh, or or grew up in brigade, um, brigade alums through growing up in brigade, but aren't serving as a leader. So that's another way you can support in different ways. You can support them financially. There's the opportunity 
opportunity to do that. Uh, you can check out these links. And uh, I know that if you connect then with uh, uh, um, the, the one of the persons that's uh, involved with these, uh, you can, you can uh, gain more information about it. <clears throat> Hey, if you if you live anywhere uh, in the greater Philadelphia area, we'd love to see you come, for instance, to the uh, even just stop in and visit a couple hours during the Camp Arama during the day. Or, or 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 if you live out in California or you're in California at the time uh, uh, that, that the um, leadership advance is going on. That'd be great. Dave Greg would love to have you stop in and uh, introduce yourself and 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 and. Uh, and I know, I know that uh, uh, Dale and Roger would love to have you uh, stop. I've been to the Klondike uh, out at Camp Stony Glen in, uh, in Ohio, and that's that. That was loads of fun. I was there as a speaker, and I had I had a great time that that whole weekend. So, just a reminder that for all of us as alumni. <clears throat> Um, we, we can we 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 can support uh, the ministry through volunteerism by praying for and financially supporting, you know, as as we see fit these these different events uh, as as both the national organization and as the as regional and and. and I I know that that the local leaders really appreciate when we volunteer for these events because it really frees them up to really have those interactions with the young men or boys that they want to have. And, you know, while we run most of the events. So <clears throat> so uh, there's just the, the, those uh, the, just wanted to make you aware of those upcoming events. So uh, I am going to just uh, brief uh, or Dave Cameron, you were you were going to announce the next uh, the date and uh, the theme of the next council ring. And then we'll move back to uh, additional stories, Arden. All right. Uh, the uh, date for the uh, January council ring is going to be uh, Tuesday, uh, January 31st. And the uh, theme of this council ring will be uh, what special events you did or do if you are a current leader in your in your region. OK, these are regional events. And that's what we were just talking. These are regional events that we were just talking about. So what are the but you might have grown up in the 60s or 50s in Brigade and there was a regional event you want to share about then. Or you might want to share Alex might want to share about the Camporama that's he now as a leader, for instance, you know, it could be current or it can be past. So uh, so we'll move back to Brigade stories, Arden. Actually, I'd like to give uh, Alex an opportunity to talk about the uh, Camporama because I think he has a slide pre prepared for that. I can if I'm if I'm OK to share screens. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the capability to share it. Share screens. I yep. think Keith would need to give you that. He's the host. Uh, both both Keith oh. and I and and Doug, who's on this call too. Uh, we jumped from a Camparama planning meeting, which is held once a month. That was at seven o'clock tonight, and then all of us uh, finished that meeting and and came over to this alumni meeting. So I know that. Alex is prepared to show a slide and say something about the Delaware Valley Camperama uh, at the very beginning of April. So every year we get together a bunch of a uh, <clears throat> bunch of uh, leaders and guys bring their units. Um, we have also started to have some folks uh, who are outside of CSB start to join us. Um, we do a weekend of uh, camping of competitions, um, and we also have uh, dedicated time for. Uh, fellowship, and we have a speaker in uh, that leads us through a, uh, a particular topic uh, each year. Um, we are gearing up for uh, Camparama in 2023, um, and we would really uh, we would really covet uh, first your prayers, um, and also um, if you feel led um, to help us uh, cover some of the program costs. I think as everybody is uh, well aware, things are uh, quite a bit more expensive than they used to be. Um, and we are really uh, doing our best to try and make the weekend affordable uh, and memorable for uh, for the young men uh, who are going to come. 
Um, and there is a link that gives Sengo. Um, we are, we're using that uh, online this year. I'll, I'll also put it in the chat. So mm -hmm. I will stop mm -hmm. there and say thank we you. Have a, uh, we have a landing page for that particular event as well. Um, Alice, do you think you could put that landing page in the in the chat as well? Uh, so people could just tap on it now and then go visit it later? Yep. Let me go ahead and grab it. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for that. And I do have a very brief uh, story that that uh, is personal to me, and that is it. Um, my first introduction to what many of us know as the legendary non-coms conference at the King's College in Briarcliff Manor, New York, you know, high above the Hudson River. Um, it, that was at Christmas time in 1981, during the Christmas to New Year's Eve holiday week was my very first introduction as a new battalion leader uh, to the hundred and some teenage young men who came there from battalions all over the Northeast. And really that five day experience, four nights, five day experience convinced me to apply for brigade staff, which I did the following year, and then began my my time on staff with brigade um, in 1982. So it was the Christmas time, come to think of it, that uh, really had a big influential impact on my life through the uh, non-coms conference that we had. Actually, it was Doug Henderson who took me to that and I just went to Doug, Henderson, Doug Henderson's memorial service uh, this past Monday at, over at Belmar, New Jersey on the New Jersey shore town. So uh, a lot of those memories come flooding back this week because I was there at this memorial service for Doug as well. He was 92 and he was a great mentor to me during my first couple of years on brigade staff where I was interning with him and he was my mentor. Thanks, Arden. 